Today, in this video, I'm going to put this hand tech scope up against this fluke. And we're going to compare their features and functions, and we're going to see if this scope can keep up with this very expensive scope here. It costs 10 times the price of this scope, by the way. Um, nowadays, it's like $4,500, $500 for this scope. 12 years ago, when I got this, I paid $2,300 for it. So we're going to see which scope is the best, or if it can keep up or if they're equal. Before I started the testing on the Handtech, I had to go through the equipment to make sure everything was in operational. But I noticed that these scope probes that it came with, these are junk. Or the capacitors, they're broken. And I got terrible readings. I got rounded off readings of square waveforms with these scope probes. And it made this hand tech look like it was a piece of junk because both inputs are showing exactly the same thing. So it was kind of like, oh, that's the scope. So I had to get some high voltage probes. Actually, they're just times 100 is all they are. These right here have a nice response time. So this is what we're going to be using in the test right here. Okay, I put basically a kilohertz wave into them, and they're both reading generally equal at 1.046 or 47. That's good. Let's increase the frequency. They look so good, I just thought I'd go for it, so I'm up here probably around 140 kilohertz somewhere. There we go. Nice and flat. Reading the same waveform. That's good. Good so far. Now, I picked this scope up on eBay. I saw it and I just started drooling over it. And I go, I hope this thing is good, you know. So we're going to keep testing here and see. I might start drooling more. I don't know. So I'll tell you, this scope, although it's a digital scope, it's basically analog controlled. So it's quick to set up and get the trigger and all that lined up and everything well this is more computerized where it has little selections and once you set them all up it remembers those so the next time you go to use it if you happen to be in that frequency range all those settings are great for you but if you're not you gotta go around and reset everything so that's the one difference in this between that over there between this fluke and between the hand tech Okay, so one little difference I noted is that when you expand out on your time scale, um, wherever you got your trigger set with the fluke, now it has a left and right position for trigger, so you can move it over. You've got to press that first to initialize it. You can move your trigger over to the center or wherever. So wherever your trigger is, that's where it's going to stay focused on the waveform as you uh, zoom out. So as we zoom out more, we start looking at that. Now over here, even though the trigger is on the right here, it's telling you the height of where it's going to trigger at the voltage level. But in the center, that's where it tends to hang out. It tends to stay in the center, focused on the waveform. Now you can move it with the left and right buttons right down here. So it's generally the same thing as a fluke. It's just a little bit different type of operation maybe to avoid copyright infringement I don't know but uh, this is generally getting to be a pretty nice scope in the operation here one feature that this hand tech scope has I've noted right now over this uh, fluke scope is it has this auto set when you press that it calibrates everything so if you press it it goes through the whole range and then it's basically finished right there So anytime you operate a, a menu on this, t to turn the menu off, basically it has a menu off button here. Now I think that the menu will go off after so many seconds if you just let it sit. But if you want to get rid of it quicker, you can use this button right here and that will turn it off right away. Now when I first got this Handtech scope, it came with some cheap probes. I mean they might have been good on another time, but they uh, they were not flat and clean they were rounding the waveform off no matter what you couldn't adjust them or anything maybe they were broken inside 
So that at first I didn't suspect. I was suspecting the scope because it's $500. It's so low in price. It's unbelievable that you could get something that would function this good for that amount of money. So I suggest getting some high quality scope probes. Actually I only paid $15 for this one. Here's a high voltage probe because the probes that come with it, they're not high enough voltage to operate to look at coil gun projects and things like that in the 450 volt range. So I had to get high voltage probes and they actually work much cleaner than the probes that it came with. So I'm pretty impressed with this scope right now so much that let's let's put the the fluke scope to the side because this has got some other features in it that the fluke doesn't even have that I want to show you. Just like the fluke scope it has save and recall features so basically I got the generator on if I want to save this you press the save recall button then you press wave then you gotta press this to hit save and then there's your file now to get out of this you gotta press save recall again and then menu off now we're looking at the input signal so let's get rid of it now let's go back and see if we can recall the wave go to wave and then recall and there it is turn the menu off now that's basically stored in memory and when you put the machine back and run it's gone so here we put the generator back on that's equivalent of just basically doing this the fluke does have this function also too but it's easier on a hand tech because it's only one on one off you can freeze it and then you can start it up let it take signal input again this is cool I like this scope a lot really the only con about this scope is it doesn't come with any instructions so you basically gotta play with these buttons to figure it out so it was a little confusing at first I have to say but uh, if you keep doing it all the time, you pretty much be pretty in tune with how it works. And it ends up being a nice scope, actually. So we expand the waveform out, look at it there. You know, so this here blinking up red, that's the battery charge. Like there's no instructions. So when this thing is blinking many times red and very little green, that's when the battery's full. Otherwise, it's not really full yet because the green bars if we keep watching maybe they'll show up here because it's been plugged in a while they will keep pulsing over to the right and it makes you think that the battery's not full because they go from low to medium to high all the time so the clue is that it's blinking red many times and it doesn't go to green very often that's when the battery's full so let's unplug the charger and we'll just run right off the battery now you see it's all green we got three bars we're full I hope you can see that <clears throat> one thing this does have that the fluke scope don't have is you can change the color of the screen under system you can do it's called the interface but it's really like the the border it has the selections of color and then if we go in here to to more you'd think it'd be under display but it's not go to wave color and we can select you know orange red green, pink, cyan, or standard yellow. So that's kind of cool. The Fluke doesn't have that. Under each and every one of these buttons, the trigger, the horizontal, and the menu, there's, you got like a little option of selections there. and so if we go to horizontal it'll give us this here window selection we can actually double window now the fluke scope that I have does not do this so this is kinda cool it gives you like a close-in view and an expanded view of what you're looking at 
So basically, let's look at it. If we were looking at that many pulses, actually it gives us a couple times scale on the zoom. That's kind of cool. So if you want to take a one shot uh, freeze of a waveform, basically you go to your trigger here and put it on single. And then now I'll connect this momentarily to the little generator. And it captures that waveform right in there. And this, I guess, will reset it for you. But it still remembers what's in there until the next one comes. So there's the next next shot. So that's how that works. And so you can use that on coil guns if you want to capture the pulse. In the auto mode, it runs continuously. Like the Fluke Scope, it does have a recorder. And it has three modes. So basically, if you pick one, it'll start recording. Basically, this looks at a long event to see if there's a glitch. And so that, you could tell if there's a glitch at that location in the circuit. That's pretty useful. To get out of these modes, basically, you got to go to return, say yes, and then wait five seconds or menu off. It also has a DVM mode, scope or DVM. I don't use a digital voltmeter, usually on the scopes, but it's handy if you're out in the field and you need to look at some voltage real quick. Press it again to go back to scope. It has a cursor function right here. If you press this and then select the type in time, we can now measure. I imagine you can move these with these uh, left and right buttons and they, they work and so you can see where your measurement you can start and end. And a little handy feature to have that plus besides that if you just move this because of the center line you could tell how wide your your pulse width just by using that little quick feature right there this has got 1.6 microseconds that's pretty handy one nice feature is you can change the intensity of the grid background under utility and go into I believe it's display and there's a grid dotted line it's on the second part of the menu so there's three little menus to display. There's that menu and that one. There's dotted line. We can have all straight lines. We can, we can turn it off. So there's dotted line and also intensity. You can control how bright that dotted line is. It's very faint, see? Nice feature. And to round it up, let's uh, try a little sine wave generator about 38 kilohertz and it looks pretty good looks so this is a close-up screenshot here so you can see what I'm talking about the battery gauge is up on the top right corner and then below that we have 129 kilohertz that's a little frequency measurement tag that you can go into the system in there and you can set it up so it appears on the screen now I don't know how to turn that off I've been looking around it's like I said this thing sometimes confusing but I turned it on once and it's just there so um, let's look at the measurement uh, right here in the very center this blue thing right here this is what I want to show you if you move the waveform it could tell you how many microseconds milliseconds the waveform is moved over if we go over on this side, it's probably on a positive side. Down here at the bottom on the left, you'll see a, a 5 volts. That's uh, your range right there. Range is set 5 volts per square division. On the right side, that's your uh, trigger voltage, 4.6 volts, wherever you set your trigger at. 
if you move your trigger that goes up it triggers at 5-2 move it down and that's how your trigger works up at the top here that's your range of microseconds your time divisions so if I demonstrate the auto set button on the keyboard here and I press it we can look at the screen and you see it goes through the ranges now if we just press the menu off right now it'll leave these little uh, information bar about the waveform at the bottom there that's pretty cool now if you want to get out of that you gotta press uh, menu and then you gotta press cancel and then menu off so basically if we want to look at the the menus for uh, the vertical or the voltage we could press those look at here see them up close a little bit better and we want to look at the menu for the, uh, the horizontal there it is right there this is where we can get our, our windows double window single window we want to look at the menu for the trigger it's got more features over here your coupling one thing to do is when you get this scope is utility and you want to look at all these options that are in here and get to know where they're at basically it's navigation once you have navigation it's easier to work this scope a little confusing at first it was to me but um because i'm used to a fluke but uh, this scope, once you get to know what's going on, there's pretty much no problem with it. It's got a great color display. I mean, it's crisp and sharp. I can't, can't deny that, that at all. So, and all in all, I like this scope. So like I said, when I first saw it on eBay, I started drooling when I was looking at it. And I was hoping that it was going to be everything that I wanted. And it turned out to be that it is. So... If you want to save some money and you want to get into some advanced projects of coil guns, power supply switching, audio amplifiers, this is an excellent scope right here. I, I highly recommend it. And so I want to thank everyone for watching this video and I hope you've learned something from this and it's helped you out. Maybe save you some money too. Thank you and have a good day.